In 2030, important information will finally be revealed about the relationship between Princess Margaret and Peter Townsend. In the meantime, here's what's been publicly revealed about their scandalous romance. When a young Princess Margaret met Peter Townsend, he was working as King George VI's equerry, which is basically a senior personal assistant who oversees all aspects of a royal's life. In 1947, the king and his two daughters went on a three-month-long South African tour, which is when Townsend and the princess really connected romantically. She was only 17 at the time, while he was in his 30s. During a trip to Belfast, Northern Ireland that same year, they reportedly had adjoining rooms, and once the king died and Townsend was promoted within the Queen Mother's household, the pair became closer than ever. In 1952, Peter Townsend divorced his wife, Rosemary, citing adultery on her part as the reason for the split. His romance with Margaret blossomed soon thereafter, and with it came a proposal of marriage. But according to the biography, Ma'am Darling, 99 Glimpses of Princess Margaret, Margaret and Townsend's timeline together started much earlier than that. They were said to have begun their affair all the way back in October of 1947, five years before he divorced his wife. At the time, he was 32 years old and a father of two children, while she was still a teenager. Margaret was sent to Belfast to christen her very first ship, and he was there right alongside her. But there were multiple hurdles that stood in the way, particularly Townsend's status as a divorcee. The Church of England looked unfavourably on divorce, and as such would not allow him and Margaret to marry. Furthermore, as she was only 23, she required her sister Queen Elizabeth's permission to marry Townsend. The Queen was in a difficult position, as she informed Margaret to wait until she turned 25. You know how I hate confrontation, or mess, or dereliction of duty. Two years passed, but Elizabeth still refused to grant the couple permission. This forced Margaret's hand, as she once again turned to the British government for leniency. Prime Minister Anthony Eden was now in power, and he'd been through a divorce himself, so there seemed to be a glimmer of hope. Though Eden was sympathetic to Margaret's situation, there was only so much he could do. In order to appease the princess and allow her to marry Townsend, he agreed to change the Royal Marriages Act of 1772. This decision excluded Margaret and any of her future children from the line of succession. By doing so, Margaret and Townsend would no longer need the Queen's stamp of approval, and surprisingly enough, Elizabeth agreed to the amendment. Though Queen Elizabeth and Parliament gave Princess Margaret a way forward to marry Peter Townsend, it would have required her to give up her and her future children's positions in the line of succession, and that was apparently too difficult for her to do. And so, on October 31st, 1955, Margaret announced to the Commonwealth that her engagement to Townsend was over. She ultimately chose to put duty to the monarchy and to her sister over her own relationship. Though Margaret was the party responsible for announcing the end of the engagement, there are some conflicting accounts regarding exactly who broke up with whom. Some reports indicate that Townsend was the one to call things off, considering how much was on the line for the princess. In 1978, he released his autobiography, in which he wrote, She could have married me only if she had been prepared to give up everything, her position, her prestige, her privy purse. I simply hadn't the weight, I knew it, to counterbalance all she would have lost. Townsend also recalled the moment when he and Margaret both knew that they had to pull the plug on their relationship. As he revealed, when it was done, we looked at each other. There was a wonderful tenderness in her eyes which reflected, I suppose, the look in mine. After Margaret and Townsend went their separate ways, she returned to royal life, while he said goodbye to the United Kingdom altogether. After years of working for the royals, he picked up his things and moved to Belgium. The romance between Margaret and Townsend was the biggest hurdle the royals endured since King Edward VIII abdicated the throne so that he could marry divorcee Wallace Simpson. That earlier scandal remained fresh in the public's memory, which didn't exactly bode well for Townsend. Wallace is not just some woman I'm carrying on with. We intend to marry. Excuse me. 
After his time in Belgium, Townsend once again relocated, this time choosing France as his destination. Apart from releasing his autobiography in 1978, he lived a relatively quiet life. He also married again in 1959 to a Belgian national called Marie Luce Jamain, who some say shared a striking resemblance to Margaret. The couple went on to have two children together. After Margaret's engagement with Peter Townsend came to an end, she was hearing her personal clock ticking louder and louder. At 26, she was starting to push the age of when she could tie the knot with an eligible bachelor. Only one man in her immediate circle of friends wasn't in a relationship. His name was Billy Wallace, and he proposed to her on a number of occasions. And eventually, she finally agreed. But their engagement was over in a flash, when he had a brief affair while on vacation. Next on the princess's radar was Anthony Armstrong Jones, a photographer she'd crossed paths with. She kept their relationship under the radar due to the media scrutiny she was facing at the time, although they did eventually marry. Shortly before she got engaged, the princess had gotten wind of Townsend's engagement to Marie Luce Jamain. This led some of her inner circle to believe that she only accepted Armstrong Jones's proposal because of her ex's plans. She maintained, however, that she knew an engagement with Armstrong Jones was just around the corner. For a while, it seemed as though details about Princess Margaret and Peter Townsend's relationship would only exist in whispers and stolen moments. But then, in 1978, Townsend released his autobiography, Time and Chance, which detailed his time with the princess. After her father died and the two started spending even more time together, Townsend and Margaret's feelings developed at pretty much the same rate. As he wrote, It was then that we made the mutual discovery of how much we meant to one another. She listened, without uttering a word, as I told her, very quietly, of my feelings. Then she simply said, That is exactly how I feel too. Townsend also shared how difficult it was to pull the veil over their relationship. As he wrote, We had reached the end of the road. Our feelings for one another were unchanged, but they had incurred for us a burden so great that we decided together to lay it down. Fans of Netflix's The Crown couldn't help but wonder if the season 5 reunion between Princess Margaret and Peter Townsend ever happened in real life. In the heartbreaking episode, the long-lost exes meet for the first time in decades as they go for a garden walk, reminisce about their relationship, and hold each other again while dancing. As for real life, Margaret and Townsend did in fact cross paths on more than one occasion. Royal Highness. Peter. After their split, Margaret and Townsend sent letters to each other sporadically, though they didn't reunite in person until 1992. They both happened to be at a function when they saw each other, and the following year, they crossed paths once again during a luncheon at Kensington Palace. According to a guest who was present at the time, the former couple sat on a palace sofa and struck up a conversation. Just two years after sitting on that sofa at Kensington Palace, Peter Townsend passed away at the age of 80. The former equerry to the king died in Paris, France on June 21, 1995. According to a statement released at the time, Princess Margaret was sad to learn of this news. However, it was also confirmed that she would not be attending his funeral. Instead, Queen Elizabeth sent a message to Townsend's wife to offer her condolences. Perhaps one of the saddest elements of Margaret and Townsend's relationship is in the way it's been recorded for history. Though we have his autobiography and the inside perspective of friends, the contents of the letters shared between the lovers won't be opened until the year 2030. The correspondences between them are currently boxed up and stored in Windsor Castle. They're scheduled to be opened on the 100th anniversary of the princess's birth. Hopefully at that point, the public will finally be able to discover all of the most romantic details about one of the most captivating love stories in the history of the royal family. For all the pomp that exists within the royal family and its structures, there are some systemic changes that manage to occur over time. The biggest hurdle that stood in Princess Margaret and Peter Townsend's way was the Royal Marriages Act of 1772, and its historical roots are rather disturbing. 
The act was established by King George III, who took issue with his brothers marrying commoners. Passing the act enabled the king to oversee the marriages within the royal family and have the final say as to who could wed whom. If the monarch didn't approve, the royal in question could petition Parliament, but even that path was tricky. But there is hope for the present and the future, as the Royal Marriages Act of 1772 is now defunct. It was repealed as part of the 2011 Perth Agreement, and now only the first six royals in the line of succession are required to ask the king or queen if they can marry their chosen partner. The official record and the impact of Margaret and Townsend's romance on the law is a bit murky. But still, their failed engagement and requirement to give up their love for the crown was said to have turned the tide, as it impacted the views of the British public regarding marriage rules within the royal family.